I'm going to be putting a territory card above and below their card. So that means that card becomes mine, my territory. Flank. I'm gonna show you how to beat B and D, the card game in Bravely Default 2, and we're gonna start right now. But before we get into the rest of the video, if you wanna know more about Bravely Default 2 and how to break this game, B and D, that like and subscribe button. And for those who think you have a really good B and D strategy, comment down below. I wanna know what your strategy is. Let's get into it. Right here in Savalon, there's someone who has a card we need, and it's this kid in front of the end. Man, I love the music. As you can see, this is where I learned how to play the game. I actually have seven losses. I didn't know what was happening, but I don't want that happening to you. Let's get those B and D wins. Okay, I get to go first. So I have a deck that's somewhat similar to the beginning of your B and D adventure. I think this is something similar to what you have, but that's just my guess. But you're gonna wanna use this Orpheus card. Effect Ill Breeding weakens all humanoid and beast cards, regardless of affiliation. So if you play this card, your beast cards and your opponent's beast cards are gonna be weak, and also their humanoid cards, which is pretty devastating. So just keep that in mind. So choose this deck. So the goal of this is to try to get as many squares as possible in your color. As you can see on the far left side, it shows your color, which is blue. Your enemies is red. You wanna have the board with more blue tiles than red tiles, and then you get the win. The safest way to play this game is through corners. You wanna make sure that you play in the corners of the game, cause then your territory cannot be taken over. I believe this game calls it flanking. There's my first move in a corner. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. This is the card that we need. Why do we need this card? Let's read and find out. Effect Territorial Gains. Every square neutralized during your turn results in you occupying a square above this card's base. In other words, the person who has this card on the field, if they are able to eliminate any squares of opposing color, this card will just grow vertically in territory. It's like you're trading territories. Oh, I like that fan you have there. Thank you. It's mine now. It's my, it's my fan now. So the first thing you do when you see this on the field is get rid of it. There's a flan beast that they're calling the flan nakota. You'll see two squares, one that is highlighted green and the other that is a darker green color. The actual figure itself is the highlighted green section. The dark green section is the area in which this card is going to attack. So you can place this figure or the light green square on an open spot, but the dark green square is where the attack is going to happen. And if you're worried about attacking your own squares, don't worry about it, it's not gonna happen. Don't worry about it, I'm coming, I'm coming. So, as you can see, I can't occupy this, where the light green square is. But, I'm going to occupy my dark green square to attack that black mage, because I do not want that there. Bye! So they played Shirley, which is a card I think Shirley's going to have, which strengthens all humanoid and spirit cards regardless of affiliation. But remember, we have Orpheus. Weakens all humanoid cards regardless of affiliation. Just kind of a counter. But I do have a humanoid card I'd want to play because it is strengthened, so I'm going to play that one first. This seems generally safe. I'm staying around the corner so I can't get flanked easily. Again, just trying to occupy as many squares as possible. Okay, so he laid down three across. What I'd want to do is either eliminate these or just occupy spaces. For now, I'm gonna occupy spaces. I'm gonna show you about flanking. I'm gonna to try to flank that middle square so that it turns into my affiliation. As you see, I have a card here, diagonally up to the right. In the middle, we have an opposing territory. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to occupy that square and that square to create this diagonal line to flank that spot so it becomes my territory. So, boom. Booyah. Now it's mine and he just killed it. So he has me set up in a pretty good position right now. I'm not using Orpheus for his ability, I'm using Orpheus for his squares. If I put him right here, because there's a square right here that's mine, and I'd be putting a square up here, we'd be flanking these two squares. Those two squares would become mine now. I means I get two blue just by putting this here. And on top of that, I get to attack the square that's diagonally to the right, which means he loses three squares with this one turn. Booyah. You win. Once you fought this kid enough, you could then get this black mage yourself. Again, if you place this card, for every enemy card that you eliminate, not flank, but eliminate, this card will grow vertically. Because of that, I want to play this card first and in a safe spot. One of the corners is fine. I like the bottom left. They also have a black mage. Just get rid of it. Nope, they don't get to play that game. And I gain a card because of it. It's like free real estate. And then you're ready to hunt around to go after other people who have cards, such as this soldier. Just fight him, do the same tactics, get all of his cards. And don't forget all of the opponents that are in the casino. I'm not into gambling. I don't know why I said it that way. Casino. So you have this opponent, you have this grandma, person behind the desk, then there's a sneaky guy in the balcony in the bottom left. And then when you're comfortable, you can fight Shirley where my character is standing. This guy has a card you're really gonna need. I play first, black mage, go. 
He played that Beastmaster really weird. Uh, okay. Now the Beastmaster is gone. And I get that territory. Not gonna fall for your tricks. I'm not attacking those. Still not attacking those. I gotta look at my defense. Look at my defense. Oh, oh no. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna, what am I gonna do? He's sweating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this card right here. This is going to occupy that space and take out that enemy. And because I'm taking out an enemy, my black mage over there is gonna grow up one. So that means this top left area is gonna be occupied in blue. And these two cards are gonna be flanked by our blues. So those cards will be mine. One, two, three. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Did we win? Yes, it yeah it, it yeah we did. It told it, it just told me in like in in bright red and gold text. The card you want to take from this opponent is this card, Horton. Effect fortify position. When this card causes a neutralization, neutralized squares become yours. And this card's non-base squares are strengthened. So essentially, it's an attack card. So in Savalon, make sure you get the Black Mage card and the Horton card. Where's the next broken card, you say? I'll show you. Right here in Rheimdahl. And we're gonna be challenging this soldier, which can be found on the second floor of this building. This person has the most broken card ever in BND. First, we have to learn how to combat it, and then I'm gonna show you why it's so broken. So I'll take the black mage and I'll put her in a normal spot. Thank you, feel nice and cozy. I'm getting Horton, I know what I wanna do. I know what I wanna do. Oh no, 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 you gotta get, no. Get, ri get rid of her, get, get, rid of, get rid of Martha. You have to get rid of Martha. Martha is going to destroy you. Ah, much better. That's okay. Bye, Dag. And then I, oh my gosh. What, oh, oh my gosh. Comboed. Mm. I'm gonna place this card here because then I'd be flanking this card turning this one blue And I'm also going to be eliminating a red card allowing the black mage to take a territory right above her There we go, I'm ready. Oh Is that so so what I'm gonna do here is that I'm gonna place a card right there. I'm flanking two other cards I get two free cards, so I'm just gonna do it Booyah there's a couple of options. I want to make sure I have the most squares so that I get the most points. So I can lay it here where I would get two points for laying, but because I'd be blanking this square like this, that means I'd be getting an additional square. So my points would end up being 14. There you go, all them points. What you want to obtain from this person is the Martha card. Oh, this card's so sweet. Let me show you what it does. Effect. Territorial gains. At the end of opponent's turn, a neutral square is selected at random and becomes yours. Meaning, after every opponent's turn, you get a free square. It's free real estate. So you can replace your black mage with Martha. Because the black mage will only get a maximum of four squares. She will get a maximum of six. There's another card that's pretty fearsome. And you can get that back at Beautiful Savalon. This card will be available to you later on in the story. I think chapter four. This card is located in the palace. And this card has it. Some fights take your cards, so just go ahead and save. You can get them back, but it's not worth the hassle. Okay, he gets to go first. And we're going to use the deck that we built. You could replace these level one monster cards with something else. I'm just showing you that really just do a lot with just Martha. Default. This is the card we're going after. Here's why. Effect default. Card is returned to your hand at the end of the turn. Effect triggered only when you are playing first and only once per battle. So essentially, you get this card back and get to play it again. It's a free turn. It's free three spaces. It's free real estate. So I'm going to go ahead and play Martha first. So I can keep getting those free spaces. <gasps> they also have Martha. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, no, 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 no. Oh. 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 That was such a hard counter, Martha. I'll take that, thank you. Thank you, Horton. I'll flank that side. Thank you, Mucho. Darn it. Oh. What a sad turn. It's all gone. I'll just play this here. This is probably my safest play, so I'm going to put it here. There we go. 18 points. Not that much, but you'll get more. But to purchase this default card, it's 
kind of expensive. But if you want to learn how to farm these points easily, don't worry, got you covered. This strategy comes from Chaos Sarah. This person personally reached out to me on Discord to show me this BND point farming strategy. The cards you need are Pictomancer, which can be found from a man in this house in Endero, Oracle, and Helio, which can be found from this man in Wizwald, Dragoon, which can be found this soldier in Rheimdall, Berserker, which can be found from this person in Savalon, and Black Mage, which can be found from this kid in Savalon from the beginning of the video. So once you have these cards ready to go, you can farm this woman in Rheimdall for BND points. It makes getting those cards really easy. And then you don't have to go over the tough BND battles over and over and over again. Let's try the strat out. For the strategy, Helio and Pictomancer are going to be your saviors. Helio with Reinforce strengthens all job cards regardless of affiliation. So job cards will have more squares to use when placed. Pictomancer's effect, Stay Hand. Once placed, prevents any card that occupies two squares in addition to its base square from being played. So if they have a card that has two dark squares on their tiles, they have to just pass. They can't play them. Super key. So what I'd like to do is keep it safe. Play Pictomancer on the bottom right. They automatically can't play three cards. Look at their deck. Frustrated. Then I played Helio. And at this point, they can't move. Look at their cards. They're all blacked out. She just has to pass. She might as well just play a 52 card pickup. That's the only game this person's winning. Lay down my Black Mage. Take one of those out. And then I get one. Take another one of theirs out. Then I get one, and then take this one out. 15. That easy. Look how many points you get. 50 for 15 squares. Just keep doing that until you have enough points to earn those cards. How many? Chaos Seraph recommends 900. I did 2,000. I went a little overboard. As he's, yeah, look at look at total points earned. I, I, I farmed a lot of points. You're probably wondering, hey, Boogie Boogie, this is just a card game. How you can help us break the actual game? I actually have a video series just about that. You can find that right here. If there's any B&D card strategies that you want the community to know, please comment down below. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. Stay healthy, stay strong. Catch you next time.